Hello year two, welcome back. Uh, I hope you're really excited about our new art topic. I know I am. I've been really inspired today to uh, write a poem. I've been really inspired by this painting here, one of my favourites. Um, first of all, you'll need to go and get a piece of paper and some pens, so I'll let you go and do that now. Okay, got everything? Brilliant. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous about re writing a poem because I know that poets only use the best words possible for their poem, to paint that picture in the reader's mind. So, we've got to be really careful about the words we choose. I'm going to show you the names of some types of words we use every day. Uh, we call them word classes. We have looked at them before in year two, so I'm going to show them on the screen now and see if you can remember what they are, what they mean, and whether you can think of any examples. Welcome back. Did you remember? Don't worry if you didn't, because we're going to go through them now. Now, the first word was nouns. I'm just going to write it on my board here. It's a little heading. Now, we usually say that nouns are the name we give to people, places, or uh, objects, um, so or even ideas. So, I'm Mrs. Haynes. I'm a noun. That's the name you give me. I'm a teacher. That's the name we give my job. This is a board. That's the name we give this object. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at this painting here. It's by Vincent van Gogh. It's called The uh, Cypress Tree and the Wheat Field. It's one of my favourites. I find it quite a calm picture. So I'm going to start by thinking of which nouns I can see which objects I can see in my painting. First of all, very obviously, I can see that tree. So I'm going to write down tree. And I know that tree has that long E sound at the end. And I know that it is that double E. What else can I see in my picture? I can see in the sky all these swirls. And I think these whiter swirls are clouds. So I'm going to write down clouds. That's the name we give to those white fluffy, or if we're very unlucky, grey things in the sky. How? O-U in the middle of clouds there. Usually the O-U in the middle of the word. Uh, what else can I see? Ooh, I can see maybe some hills in the background. Because it's more than one hill, I can add that S to the end to make it a plural, more than one. Now, I'm going to run out of nouns in a minute. This was my turn. Now, I want you now to have your turn. So, pause the video. I will put this picture on the screen a little bit bigger. And you can have a really good look. Write down as many nouns as you can see. Off you go. Welcome back. Okay, I've put a few more uh, nouns down on my board. Do you get any of these as well? Brilliant. Let's go to look at adjectives. So I'll write adjectives down on my board. Oh, it's a little bit wobbly. I'm going to do a different colour just so they stand out a little bit. Okay, now we often describe an adjective as being a word that describes. What it does is it gives extra information to a noun. So I could say, oh, there's a cup. The cup is the noun. It's a name we give to that thing we drink out of. But if I said the blue cup, blue is the adjective. It's giving us a bit more information. Uh, so we're going to think of adjectives that would help describe some of the nouns in this picture here. I'm moving this picture a little bit, so I've got a bit of space. Now, adjectives can be as simple as the colours. So if I'm looking up at the sky and the clouds, I could have those colours of blue and white. 
white. Colours are quite an easy way to add some adjectives. We can see that the tree is green. But we can also describe not just the colours, but a little bit more. I'm thinking this tree, this cypress tree, that's the name of the type of tree it is, is very tall. So I could call it a tall tree. So I'm going to put tall as an adjective. This bush is much larger than this, so I could say large. Looking at the picture as a whole, you could say it's quite colourful, so maybe that's one I could put down as well. Again, this was my turn, and now, whoop, I want it to be your turn, and I want you to pause the video. Again, I'll give you this to look at, and think of as many adjectives to describe what you can see. You might be describing the tree, the sky, the fields, the bushes, the mountains, whatever you want to. Just get as many down as you can. Off you go. Okay, welcome back. I've added a few more adjectives to my list. Have you got some? Brilliant. Okay, the last word class we're going to look at are verbs. Now, we usually say that verbs are action words, words that just tell us what we're doing, um, walking, sitting, reading, thinking, dreaming. Um, we're going to be using the ing suffix with our verbs today. So again, I'm going to have a look at my picture. I think this might be a bit tricky, but we'll, we'll do it. We'll manage now, I'm looking at this tree. It's the darkest thing in this picture, and we've already said it's tall. It looks like it's reaching up into the sky. So reaching is the action it's doing, or I think it's doing, so I'm going to use that word. So reach. Now, I know the word reach, that root word, has the long E sound in it. And usually when they have the long E sound, or long vowel sound in them, we just need to add ing to the root word, reaching. Mm, now, what else are they doing? Looks a little bit windy in this. Looks like the clouds are racing across the sky with that wind. So I'm going to try racing. Now, I know the word race has that split digraph. Race. Okay, now race ends with an E. I'm going to remove the E and then add I N G because that's the rule. So we've got reaching and racing. Hmm, it is windy in this picture, and I'm looking at this bush here, and it looks like it's flopping over to one side of it. So I'm going to use the uh, verb flopping. So the root word is flop. Now I notice that flop has that oh, that very short vowel sound. When it's got the short vowel sound, usually we have to double the consonant, so double that P, and then add I N. G. So we've got rules there for the spelling. Now it's going to be your turn, running out of room. I'm going to show the picture again and you're going to come up with as many verbs as you can think of that might go with this picture. Don't forget your spelling words. If your root word has a long vowel sound, probably just adding ing. If it ends with an e, taking off the e and adding ing, and if it's got that short vowel sound, like in flopping up, usually double the consonant and add ing. Your turn, off you go. Okay, welcome back. Did you get your uh, verbs down? Brilliant. Don't forget to check your spellings. Now, 
uh, I was running out of space on my board. So I've put my uh, nouns, my adjectives and my verbs onto a separate piece of paper. So I've got a little bit of space here to write, write my poem. But I'm going to have those in front of me, just like yours are in front of you. Uh, you. Now we're going to write a poem. It's going to be a really simple poem and everyone will be able to have a go at this. We're going to use our different word classes to build up a one, two, three poem. And by that, I'm just going to write it down, we need one noun we need two adjectives and we need three verbs now the most important word we're going to choose is our noun we only need one of them we only need one aspect of this picture that we are going to be thinking about and that is going to decide which adjectives we use and which verbs we use. Now, I love this painting, I always have. I've always said it's a very calming picture. But the one thing that always stands out to me is the tree, because everything else is quite light, but the tree is very dark, it really pops out at me. So I think I might use the word tree. That will be my noun, okay? So it's the start of my poem, so I will give it a capital letter. That's all I need for my first line. One noun and I'm going to tick that off. Done it. Boom. Now I need to think of two adjectives. Now I could go, oh, pretty and sparkly. They are both really good adjectives to use, but do they describe my tree? Do they give me more information about the tree in my painting? They don't really, do they? I wouldn't say it's a pretty tree and I definitely wouldn't say it's a sparkling tree. So I need to look at my adjectives and see if I can think or find two adjectives that best describe my tree. So I'm looking at all my adjectives. I can see I chose tall because I said it was very tall. I could use large. Could I use colourful? Mm, no, because it's really only one colour. I could use green because it is green. I jotted down another adjective actually earlier and I put important because I feel it is important in the picture. It really stands out, seems to be what my eye is drawn to. So I might use tall and important to describe the tree. I'm going to start with tall. Again, it's the first line. So I am going to give it, a, it's the first Oh, at the beginning of the line. So I am going to give it a capital letter. So tall. Now usually when we write two adjectives together, we separate them with a comma. And I'm going to do that here. Tall. Important. I'm not giving important a capital letter. Because I don't need to. It's not at the start of my line. So. I've got my two adjectives. I'm going to read my poem out, see how I feel about it. Tree, tall, important. I quite like that. I'm quite happy with that so far. If your words don't sound right together when you say your poem out loud, swap them around. That's what a good poet does. So I've got my one now, I've got my two adjectives. Now I've got to go for my three verbs. Okay, so my verbs. Hmm. Now, looking at my tree, we said it was reaching, reaching up to the sky, and I suppose it's reaching because it's growing. It's growing up tall. Um, I'm also looking at it and thinking it is quite a windy day in this picture, or at least I, I think it is. I feel that wind, and it almost looks like the tree is twisting. Now, I think I'm going to start with the verb twisting because my first line starts with a T, my second line starts with a T, and I think it would be nice if my third line did as well. So I'm going to go for twisting. Now, hmm, twist. It's got the short vowel sound. So, back in our, when we talked about our rules, I should double the consonant 
because that seemed to be the rule. But I'm looking at it and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't look right to my eye. So I'm thinking about what I know. Twist does have that short vowel sound, I. But it's got two other consonant sounds after it. St. So I know, and if that is the case, I just add ing. Okay, always check. A lot of times we can see it with our eyes whether it looks wrong or right. Now, because I'm writing a list of verbs, I'm just going to pop a comma in there to separate them. Twisting, reaching, and we've already talked about reaching, having that longer vowel sound. So we usually just add ing. Oh, I'm going to fit a little comma in there. I'm just going to have to go down to the next line. And growing. It's supposed to be on one line, so I'm not going to give growing a capital letter. And grow has that long vowel sound with the digraph. So I just add ing. And because it's the end of my poem, I'm going to pop a full stop. Now I'm going to read my poem out and check that I'm happy, check for any spellings, although we have been through them. We have got tree, tall, important, twisting, reaching, growing. I'm quite happy with that. I've done my three verbs. So I'm pretty happy with my poem about this painting. Now, that was my turn and it is going to be your turn next. Okay, right, I have written my poem down on a piece of paper, so you can see one word, two words, three words, one noun, two adjectives, three verbs. I even, because I really like the fact that every line started with a T, I tried to draw the tree from the painting as a little illustration to go with it as well. Now, that was my turn, and I'm very pleased with what I've written, but I am sure you can do much better at year two. Remember, the poem, it's one noun, two adjectives, three verbs. I've got some challenges for you here. One chilli challenge. If you choose to accept the one chilli challenge, you will write this poem using the same picture I did, The Cypress and the Wheatfields by Vincent van Gogh. Uh, and you can use some of our shared ideas. Okay, two chilli challenge. In a moment, I will be putting up a different picture and you can use the same uh, things that we did, gathering up all those words and then using the structure of the poem to create a poem about the new picture. Three chilli challenge. You can choose any picture you like, any piece of artwork you like. Uh, and as an extra spicy bit of the chilli, you can add a fourth line, maybe using L-Y adverbs. Words like slowly, uh, carefully, gently. Uh, remember, you would need four of those to follow the pattern of the poem. I cannot wait to see what you are going to send in to us. Um, and I'd love them to be illustrated probably a little bit more carefully than mine. I would love that. Um, I will be sending out some reminders of what a noun is, what an adjective is and what a verb is as well. Um, so good luck and can't wait to see them. Bye!